In this lesson, we are going to start to solve nonlinear systems of equations um, and potentially some inequalities. So, uh, a nonlinear basically just means that you could be graphing a parabola, you could be graphing an x to the third, or in this instance, we are going to be graphing something more along the lines of a circle with a line. So part of this is um, just kind of understanding what kind of equation you got going on. Like, do you recognize when you have a linear equation versus a parabola versus a circle? Um, a circle is when you're going to have two values that are both squared, x squared and a y squared, and the coefficients in the front match perfectly with a plus sign. Um, if it's an ellipse, you have two squared terms with a plus sign. So a plus is going to tell you it's a circle or an ellipse, but the coefficients don't match. Um, and that's where you end up getting uh, one direction is wider than the other direction. And then a hyperbola is if you just have a minus sign between them. So that's kind of where we're going with um, these nonlinear systems. So the um, good news to this is everything that you've done in the past to solve um, just regular linear systems of equations works. So graphing is an option, seeing where they cross, or using substitution or elimination. There is no new methods. Um, those methods still work for even this level of type of problem. So, um, so we have a, a circle with a line. So kind of the potential options or the potential things that can happen here is you have a circle and the line crosses potentially through the circle at two different spots. Or you have a circle and it just kind of grazes through, so you just get one solution. Or you have a line and they don't cross at all. So you're going to have no solution. So on these, it's very unlikely you're going to get infinite solutions because infinite solutions would be that they pretty much match each other. And so then they'll overlap each other, which highly unlikely on these types of things because you're just going to get different types of equations. So um, let's just see what we got. Uh, elimination is not much of an option here because you're not going to be able to cancel out an x squared with an x. Um, so really, substitution is kind of your thing. And we're going to build our graph along the way to kind of make sure that our answer makes sense. Um, and so we have uh, uh, this thing right here. If I'm going to graph this, I'm going to bump the 3x over. So we're looking at a negative 4y equals negative 3x divided by negative 4. Negative 4, so y is going to equal 3 fourths x. So we could actually graph that right now. So y-intercept, uh, we're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and one more, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we got this line, and then we have a circle. And if you remember how to graph a circle, is this is an r squared value, so our radius is going to be 5. So we're going to be centered at 0, 0, and we're going to go out 5 in every direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 3, 4, 5. 5, 5. So eh, maybe we cross there. Um, so potentially these are your solutions, but the problem with the graph is maybe they're not. Maybe I should have been further out or further in. I don't know. So. Let's keep going with this and let's do substitution because elimination again is not really an option. But what we can do is take this y value of 3 fourths and we can substitute it in to the y value. So that's going to be x squared plus 3 fourths x squared equals 25. All right, so now we just got to kind of fight through the world of fractions here a little bit. Because when we multiply this, we're going to get x squared, and we're going to square this entire term. So you're going to have 9 sixteenths, because you're squaring the top and the bottom of the fraction, and you're squaring that. All right. So um, I need this to combine together with this. So if I wanted to put this together, this is a 1 plus 9 sixteenths, or another way to think of it is 16 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths, which makes 25 sixteenths x squared equals 25 and then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal to move this over the other side uh, 
16 20 fifths and uh, all of this cancels it's the idea of the multiplying by the reciprocal and luckily the 25s cancel so you're just looking at a x squared equaling 16 perfect so now we'll square root both sides so we have x equaling plus or minus 4. All right, so we are looking at a coordinate that has a positive 4 and a negative 4. So um, I'm going to plug in 4 and negative 4. And I can plug it into any equation. I can even plug it into this thing, which is probably going to be the easiest. So if I plug 4 into that, I'm going to have y equaling 3 fourths times 4 and y equaling 3 fourths times negative 4. So the 4's cancel and we're just left with y equals 3. Here the 4's cancel but now we're left with y equaling negative 3. So our solution is we plugged in a 4, we got out of 3, 4, 3, and negative 4, negative 3, which actually matched our graph perfectly. So that's 3, 4, and that's uh, negative 4, negative 3. So uh, those are your solutions. So if you were to plug them back in, just to really verify, if you took 4 and squared it plus 3 and squared it, it should add up to 25, and then it wouldn't matter if you put negatives into it because the squares would make them positive. So that was problem one. Uh, we're going to do a couple others because there is some no solution types of things, and how do we know that's going to happen? What does it look like? Um, so we'll get there.